Now you're all too scared to say what you're thinking. You're a victim. Fuck that. I cancel cancel culture. Don't listen to these bitches. Watch. I can handle vultures. It's not what you said. It's not even your position. It's the way you are saying it. As I said, if you if you said Max, I think you have a I think you have a serious problem here. I'm worried about you. I think your relationship is abusive. I think some I think bad stuff's going on, and I want to try to help you. That would I don't want to help you though. That's not my goal. I know, I know. But do you see how you're now changing the subject? But if we go back to the subject we were just talking about, you no, can see how. No, the difference is you engage. Can you guys just shut the facts. fuck up and no, stop interrupting no, no, no. me? For the, I literally I, can't. I, no, I don't. No, no, I don't. No. I don't want to do this anymore. I, I, I can't talk about this. With I, I need erudite. I need you to leave, or I need you to let me finish talking when I'm talking. <laughs> Mr. Girl and Destiny, who both refer to as Max and Steven, had interesting conversations to observe from a distance. A lot of people believed Steven's goals in these conversations was simply to farm people like Max because they make for good content. At the time, Steven wanted to develop more as a person, and that drive for autonomous growth can come with an appreciation for others who look to be on similar but unique paths. Steven would describe these people as interesting, others describe them as mentally ill. Earlier, I mentioned Dabrowski's theory of positive disintegration for the level memes, but there is something to the theory that can explain why people like Max and others with mental illness are so interesting. Over the decades, psychologists have studied human development and identified traits, like intensity, that can often be indicators of a personality disorder and linked those to the potential for higher advancement in human development. The most interesting people are intense. They have a gift, a drive, an overexcitement that can't be plagiarized. And when paired with intelligence and creativity, they create the cliches that inauthentic people latch onto and hide behind. Max, despite how I personally feel about him, was a very interesting and authentic person. In this stream, he is aiming to resolve interpersonal conflict between him and Steven regarding how Steven had been speaking publicly about Max's relationship with his girlfriend Shaylin. I personally view Max and Shaylin's relationship as mutually emotionally abusive, but most of the internet at this time regarded Max to be the only, or at least the more, abusive one of the two because of the provocative content he put out giving insight to the private intimate arguments they would have. Max and Steven agreed for Not So Erudite to moderate their conversation, but after about an hour, Max starts to vocalize his concern that Not So Erudite is not so neutral. I need you to stop. Um, so just to be clear, none of this is like on me. So I'd appreciate like this like no, hard. No, I'm talking. I want you to me. shut the fuck up. I want right, you both problem, to shut Max, the fuck up. But the problem, Max, is that up. you're talking about 70% of the time in no, any time. No, that's not even true. Yes, I want. Yes, I want. Yes. To... Yes. This one-to-one -one dialogue you've had okay. with Stephen, you have unequivocally talked. I understand. The most. I understand. I want to finish saying what I'm saying, and then you can respond. Does that work for you? Can you say it in two sentences? Probably not. Can you try? Say it sure. in two sentences. I'll try. I'll try. Okay. But I need you guys to both let me finish what I'm saying. Um, because the tag team dynamic is really fucking irritating. I've been very, very neutral almost the I whole time. Just, and I just said that I don't think that's true. So saying the opposite of what I said is not really yeah, an argument. She would I understand you don't, right. nobody thinks they're tag teaming somebody. I know you don't think you're doing that. That's just what I think. <laughs> to break this down. Max is hurt that Steven spoke about Max and Shaylin's relationship in a way he feels added to the public perception that Max was the sole abuser in his relationship. Steven, however, has a lot of plausible deniability to Max's claim due to his indirectness, which is the difference between him saying, Max sounds like an abusive boyfriend, and does Max let Shaylin have a cell phone? To put it simply, at this time, Steven does think Max is abusive, but he does not feel comfortable or confident enough to directly say as much because he didn't have enough evidence to support such a direct statement if it did initiate conflict. And in his experience, everything initiates conflict. As an online debater, obviously, Steven is not what comes to mind when people think of someone who is conflict avoidant. But when it comes to interpersonal conflict, he demonstrates a different degree of comfort with conflict and will often avoid directly engaging. Max and Steven, I think, have a good understanding of each other and this conflict they are discussing here. 
Max is hiking uphill to prove conflict was initiated by Stephen, and Stephen is trotting downhill behind his indirectness. In my opinion, they are both wrong, and so I'm already bored. But things get more interesting when the moderator, not so erudite, takes an already uphill battle for Max and adds an avalanche. Let's go back and pay attention to what Max is actually asking of Stephen. It's not what you said. It's not even your position. It's the way you are saying it. As I said, if you if you said Max, I think you have a I think you have a serious problem here. I'm worried about you. I think your relationship is abusive. I think some I think bad stuff's going on, and I want to try to help you. That would I don't want to help you though. That's not my goal. I know, I know. But do you see how you're now changing the subject? But if we go back to the subject we were just talking about, you. Can- and ignore this part. Steven, you're changing the subject. You're changing the subject from the way you're saying something to what you're saying. I'm saying you could condemn me. Your position could be that I'm absolutely incredibly abusive, but you could still present that and talk about that in a way that is warm and non-condemning. And your position can be that I'm kind of maybe abusive and you can present that in a way that is extremely condemning. You did the second one. So when you say, oh, you just don't, you want me to hide what I think. I'm not saying I want you to hide what you think or that you should. I'm saying there's the way I would talk about an abuse, you punching Melina in in the face. I would certainly condemn your behavior, but I would do it in a way that didn't fuck you over. Again, I think Max and Steven have a good understanding of each other here. They just both view themselves as way more cunning and selfless than they are. Both of these streamers are very self-preserving, and honestly, they should stay that way because they are both very hard to empathize with and have compassion for. And I would also like to respond to the other thing you said, is that I, I feel uncomfortable. It's not to protect you so much as protect me. I feel uncomfortable being in the position of talking about somebody with their partner in front of thousands of people. Is that a comfort- boundary that you have with Steven, that you don't want him to talk about your relationship when she's not there? Is that a boundary no, that you're asking not, for? That's no. So I'm why are you comparing your interpersonal style to him? Because he just, again, this is the tag team thing. Steven said, wait. No, I'm asking you Yes, now. no, I want to explain why I said that, because now you're asking me why I'm saying it. Steven, yeah. sa- Steven said that if he applies the same logic that I used with the kid gloves thing, then it implies it's a horrible thing for me to say, I don't want to talk about you with your wife behind your back. And I'm saying... That's no, those are different. And I want to explain why they're different. The reason is it's not, the, I'm not saying that there's some terrible thing that would come out about you or that she would say something terrible about you. I'm saying that it is a, I feel like inherently fucks you over the fact that I'm talking about you with your partner in public when you're not there to represent yourself. I don't feel comfortable doing that because I think it's wrong, but you asshole want hey, to her. you, okay. Steven want to interview Shaylin uh, about a, a conversation where you're going to fuck me and you're going to fuck me in the interview with her. You're going to do the same fucking underhanded cold thing and try to make me look as bad as possible. Okay. And you're going to- Do you think to- you're interpersonally better at relations than Steven is? Do you think your interpersonal style, the boundaries, the way that you try to protect the people that you love is overall better than Steven's? Anyone else reading way too deep into Max and Steven testing each other's friendship with how much they can pry through conversations with the other's partners that could reveal very one-sidedly unflattering ideas about their friend? You know, if those conversations were to be had with no empathic concern for the subject of scrutiny? Me neither. I was literally on the same page as Not So Erudite just thinking, If I wanted to moderate and keep this conversation fair and on track, right now would be the perfect time to cut off Max and ask if he thinks he's better than Steven at friendships. Okay, hold on. Let me not be so indirect. Keep in mind that at this time in Steven's career, he is on a building friendships arc, almost initiated by Not So Erudite. So the idea that she would Even wait a question that implies Stephen is good at maintaining friendships is just willful ignorance. But Max engages with her question, nonetheless, and manages to entirely avoid the bait of comparing his ability to Stephen's. 
That does not, however, stop Nato Erudite from continuing to dismiss Max's concerns while Steven gleefully plays video games. Um, I think there are, no, overall, I don't know, but I think there are certain things it's not even better it's just it's just what works better for me like if if you don't if you if you don't like certain things or you don't want certain things then the way you live is better for you I, but then so, why don't you just tell steven what your boundaries are and then steven gets to decide whether or not he's willing to work within those i did i set a boundary i said i don't want i said shaylin is not gonna come on stream i'm not gonna have her on stream. right uh, I never tried to pull her no, off or you know, you know, me saying she's not going to come on stream, and I want to protect her from the chat. If the next thing, if five minutes later you say, "Is it true that you don't let her have a phone?" I don't know if that is totally respecting my boundary. I think that you kind of fucked it's me over a little bit. Unrelated? Did he respect? Uh, your you boundary? may think it's completely unrelated, but boundary. I don't think it is. Did he respect your boundary. <laughs> An effective mediator who is interested in Stephen maintaining his friendship would not add to his indirectness by speaking and objecting on his behalf. Avoiding being clear and direct with Max is what has gotten Stephen in this situation. And the way Nato Erudite jumps to aid him makes that indirectness feel more aggressive. Nato Erudite feels like an attack dog, but she's not. She's just very aware of how uncomfortable accountability is and doing a really good job of trying to help Steven avoid it. Did he respect uh, your You may think it's completely unrelated, but boundary. I don't think it is. Did he respect your boundary about not bringing Shaylin on stream? Is that correct? Okay, if I ask my coworker No, in answer office, the question. Don't weasel out. Answer the question. I already said no. It's not respecting my boundary. No. How not? I, I'm explaining it. Yeah, I'm going to lead this conversation now because you're being a baby. So I'm going to help you out here. So okay. tell us now why... That wasn't respecting your boundary. Your boundary was Shaylin can't come on stream. Isn't it true that little kids insult each other by calling each other? So are you telling me that you stated a boundary and behind the boundary was a second secret one that you didn't tell him about and no. Stephen actually crossed this one? Well, he no. didn't cross the boundary that you he stated. Did. If he you did. wanted a different boundary, he, I, you should wait, have said it. I didn't say he crossed it. I said he didn't respect it. What's the difference? I'll tell you. If I ask a coworker on a date, and she says, no. And I say, oh, okay. Well, I accept your answer is no. And then I go to the lounge and I say, Sarah's pussy stanks as loud as I can. While I would be technically not crossing her boundary, not forcing her to go on a date with me, I'm not exactly respecting it either. They're wholly different boundaries. The first boundary is I don't want to go a on a date with you. And then there's a lot of social convention boundaries as well. For example, typically when people say, no, I don't want to go on a date with you, while that's unrelated to what you stated, most people also don't want people making loud co like Absolutely. negative comments about their there's another. Public. There's also another there boundary that's crossing. There are different boundaries. Well, I, do you... different boundaries. Okay. Do you so understand I, that? Well, okay. So in my mind, if the two behaviors are linked to one another, then the person would probably feel like their sexual boundaries about saying no to the date were also not being respected because they're saying, well, well if I say no to a date, then somebody no. yells about my... Well, they this would is have just felt that a different that's boundary was crossed. Okay. They would have been like, yeah, he didn't force me to go on a date, but that's then he just, did okay. say really well, creepy I'm stuff about you, my vagina, I'm, okay. I'm telling which you is how typically an implied boundary, right? There's this some is, social contracts that we work with, yes, I get, and one social I get, contract yes, is I get probably don't perception. loudly say shit about people's genitals. It's, it's really These are hard separate to, boundaries. It's, one it's of them is really, implicit, and one of them is explicit. It's really hard to argue. You didn't respect the implicit one. It's really hard to argue that two things aren't connected. So you can just say that I'm wrong for connecting them, but that is how I feel. I'm not saying that they're unrelated. I'm saying they're two separate boundaries. And what you're saying to Steven is this was my boundary and you didn't respect it, but yes. he did. He didn't respect your implicit boundary that was connected to I that. I know, I know. We we both clear are clear on where the other person is. And I have no, no further comment about this. I am also going to have no comment about Nato Erudite's flawed understanding and application of boundaries right now. We will discuss her superiority complex and manipulative communication style in another video. This video is about hypocrisy. And right now, Stephen is finally going to speak. Surely, he will make a direct statement and not just ask a question Max has already provided the answer for, and then laugh when Nato Erudite cuts in to declare everything to be Max's fault because Stephen is a retarded child. I mean, 
not a mind reader. Stephen is not a mind reader. Yeah, For all the implicitness, then am I? So do I just? Am I not supposed to bring up anything related to Shaylin ever, just so I can understand? No, I like talking about Shaylin with you, actually. <laughs> So this is the issue, right? Is this boundary? It makes you feel. Explicit. It makes it feel like you're and part Max, of the family. Your you whole know? shtick is that you're explicit and you say things that people don't say, which means you say the implicit stuff. That's so not a shtick. Steven, it's it's called a personality. Stephen not understanding that there was also an implicit boundary attached to that is only your fault for not expressing that. That is your responsibility exclusively. You can be mad that he didn't respect it, if but Steven, there's no way if, he could have okay, mind read if that Steven, that If Steven doesn't understand that asking somebody if they allow their girlfriend to use a phone could potentially start a harmful rumor about them that they don't allow their girlfriend to use a phone, then I think he needs to read some Internet 101. But I suspect that he does understand well, I, I that would make the just same statement look... about you that when you have videos that outwardly to any normal human being would look like, this could be really abusive, and then you make an utterance saying like, no, I want to protect her from evil things online. And I, you're, I think you even knowingly made that statement knowing it sounds a little bit dicey. You can't be surprised when the question comes up. Like, How would you have said it? Well, I mean, I probably would have said the same thing, but I wouldn't be upset when somebody would ask me for clarification otherwise. Oh, so when know, you like, say, course. when you say, hey, I heard you don't let your girlfriend have a phone. You're just asking for clarification. I didn't say it. I think I just asked asking you questions it. with destiny, everybody. The problem with you that's saying not a fair representation of what Stephen did. And I think you like you like Stephen and know Stephen well enough that you should be charitable to your friend in this situation, right? You've already said that you don't. Oh, think he's I'm being hyper charitable. You are not. Oh, and you know oh you man, are. this oh, is I'm at, I'm at one percent. I'm at one percent no. here. If Max wasn't charitable here. He would not have been able to express an imagined way that Stephen could question Max's judgment or behavior publicly that Max would feel okay with. Not Erudite has done a good job of ignoring every indication of desired and attempted communication and resolution by Max, and instead focuses on invalidating Max's ability to feel hurt by Stephen's behavior. She is the worst faith actor in this call, and this isn't even her final form. It would have worked again, exceptionally I don't think it's, I don't well think because you say the most outlandish things, Max. I don't think he's intentionally trying to interrogate me. I just think that the setup of the conversation no, ended up that you way. feel interrogated, which is wholly different than anything that actually happened. And the okay. reality is, Max, that just because you feel some way about anything, you're no, a I'm gish gallop and you're changing the I subject. Mute you. I was saying something else. I will else. keep talking. If you, but you just don't like one word telling I people, this is how I feel, and then chill. projecting that world onto the landscape of everyone oh God, else, the reality is you will always get Brittany in here. wrong. You will always be wrong, because the reality is that how you feel isn't always true. He didn't interrogate you. You felt interrogated. Those I, are different okay. things. Great. And then to put on you Stephen the responsibility say, say that of you how disagree. you feel is Tyler. precisely oppositional to the thing that you constantly okay. advocate for, which yes. is that people should have to carry each other emotionally. And you make okay. Stephen do it for you all the time. And you've been making him do it, and you've been making me do it. Because you aren't willing to regulate, you aren't willing to manage yourself. All you want to do is feel how you feel and then project that onto other people. It's cowardly, yeah. it's pathetic, and you need to stop doing it or you are going to continue damaging your relationships online. Probably not with Stephen because he doesn't fucking care about shit like this. But oh, this absolutely is he does is you're constantly projecting onto people and Steven's being like, yeah, you're fucking wrong and you'll never move anywhere because you'll never believe anyone because you're so fucking convinced that all your feelings are true because they feel really big that you're never willing to hear anyone else. And that's the problem with this interpersonal dynamic is you're basically telling Steven he has to engage like you do with other people, which is unfair. It basically tells Steven that he doesn't get to be who he is in relationship with you. You won't accept that. He you know has what? to be ideal version that you have painted for what you would like ideally what precisely you would do and that's oh. a shitty thing to do to your friends and you need to stop doing it to steve I not so erudite is telling max his feelings are not valid if you were less emotional right now he would be able to see that but he can't and he won't listen to reason all of which turn out to be not so erudite's problem as a biased moderator you need to stop doing it to steve i think that your dual role in this conversation is causing problems are you the moderator or are you doing something else i think she, i became the moderator. moderator okay she's a girl uh, boss thing. 
Yeah, oh, I feel like yeah, I feel ask. like uh, if you want the power to ask questions and stop us from interrupting each other and stuff, I feel like you should not. Um... I don't need any recommendations from you about how I should or should not engage in this conversation. I feel completely okay. comfortable with it, and if it isn't good, I'll talk to people that I respect about it. Okay. Man, there's a lot of vitriol in, in this room right now. Going in all directions. Well, none is coming from me, actually, because I'm chill. But you guys, of course, yes. You guys are yes. both something else. Notice how I say that I'm chill, even though I'm not, but then it like puts it in the viewer's mind that I am, and now you can... <laughs> I did notice that. Thank you for pointing it out. Thank you for pointing it out. Yeah, so... Not so erudite emotionally responds to Max's reasonable request for unbiased moderation by refusing to consider his concerns or change her behavior. It isn't until Stephen indirectly criticizes Not so erudite by mocking her failed attempt to present herself as emotionally regulated and in control that she decides to take a step back. If Not so erudite was present and putting in a genuine effort to neutrally moderate Max and Stephen's interpersonal conflict, she would have been able to understand from Max's expressed feelings how hurtful something like indirectly being mocked for your failure or vulnerability could be coming from a friend without having to experience it herself from Stephen in this debate. In this conversation, Nato Erudite was a poor listener, an obfuscator, an ineffective mediator, and entirely too aggressive. At Max's first expressed concern that Nato Erudite was moderating one-sidedly, Nato Erudite put her own desire above that of being a just moderator. Like a fraud, she declared herself neutral while behaving as anything but 